Hello, we are live streaming here with the founding pastor of New Life Celebration Church of God, Reverend Dr. Michael D. Reynolds, and I'm Erica Reynolds. We're so happy to be able to minister to you on today, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We love you, we appreciate you. We're gonna start out this morning with a worship song. Please sing along with me, Waymaker, Spiritual Worker, Promise Keeper, My God is a Light. Amen. We, we have the words for you, so please follow along. Amen. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. 
the worship at home. He's the way maker, way maker, spiritual worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, worship you, Jesus. I worship you. God, we come to you today with uh, an excited heart because today is Father's Day. We celebrate the dads who have been doing an incredible job, dads who have been put in incredible situations, but have risen to the occasion to be the best answer possible. We bring you greetings both to uh, the pastor, uh, Pastor Harmon, and to um, uh, Angela Harmon, and we thank them. Uh, my son and daughter in the gospel, and we thank them for their ministry and all that they are offering. This becomes a special day to me. It's a special gift to have them in my life. And I'm glad that they are there doing an incredible job for the Lord. To every uh, father that is there, I say to you, thank you. Without you, this world would look different. This nation would look different. The city would look different. This church would look different. You are making the difference, and I encourage you, and I celebrate you. And to every member that's there, I tell you that it's beautiful being fathered and being cared for. Our church has phenomenal numbers of fathers who are there to make sure that everybody's cared for and watched over. And I also celebrate being your father today. Many of you have been there to provide spiritual guidance. I've been there to give insight and wisdom. And it's been my pleasure, and it also has been uh, a great act of service on my part. And I thank you for that. Please let me continue having that very familiar name, that very affirm name of Father in your life. I want to continue that relationship. Here it is that, the, uh, that on this special day, we have to look at a particular text that will bring to mind the importance of fatherhood. There, there are two texts that I'd like to use this morning. One is going to come from Romans chapter 8, verse 15. The other one from Luke chapter 15, verses 17 through verse 24. They're both going to be read through the uh, English Standard Version. And so I'm going to do those two verses together. And if you could, prepare to read with me so that we can engage in the Word of God together. It doesn't matter that you're home or that you're uh, sitting in your living room or in your bedroom. The reading of the word is important, seeing the word is important, and hearing the word is important. So please, pull out your device, pull out your Bible, and read along with me. First of all, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, part B, it says, uh, it informs us, he said, those that will cry out, Abba, Father, our Father, um, that we are able to cry out daddy, we're able to cry out father to God. Romans chapter eight, verse 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 17 through 24. But when he came to himself, he said, many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I, was, I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put on the ring on his hand and the shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, 
and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead Amen. and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to celebrate. They had a party. Hallelujah. This is what I'd like to tell you on this very special day. I'd like to say to you that this is a scripture that depicts the father. And God is showing forth a good example of what a father should look like. Everybody here is familiar with George Floyd. George Floyd was, there were protests that went on all over the world. There was over 400 cities throughout the world that were protesting about George Floyd's death. It was known everywhere. One thing is that we caught somebody's death on video. The second part of that is that while this is happening and while this is going on, he is crying out. Rarely do we get to catch people's last word in testimony. It's a rare event that we get to see the last thing that someone's going to say, but his words were caught on video. His words were pronouncing that he was in distress. He said he was in pain. He said he couldn't breathe. He cried out a number of things during this particular time. But there's one thing that he said that I find is a slight indictment on America. That is the fact that in the midst of everything going on, he cries out, Mama! Mama! Now don't get me wrong, it's a very good name to call, and there's nobody like your mama. But the situation he was in required a physical response, required a strong right arm. It required somebody to jump in and to save him. This, I believe, was the one time there should have been a cry that went, Father! Father! But you see, George, when he was growing up, his father wasn't really there for him, and his father wasn't placed in his life. So it defaulted to a call to the mother. I'm sad to say that throughout our nation, there's been many cries to a mother that belonged to a father because there's been too much fatherlessness. Over 30 to 39% of all families are missing their father. That means that there is a crisis going on in America that's going unrecorded. The statistics show that if you don't have a father at home, that it's more likely you will drop out of school. If you're a teenage female, it's more likely you'll get pregnant. It's more likely that you'll go to prison and serve time. It is more likely that you will not uh, uh, come into a class of financial stability for your future. It is more likely that you'll live in poverty. It is more likely that you'll actually commit suicide if there isn't a father in the home. Well, what I'd like to tell you, or I'd like to say to you today, is though there is this place of crisis that is present, God has placed a huge emphasis of importance on the life of the Father. And we need to be crying out when we're in distress, when we're in trouble, when we're in a problem. We need to be crying out, Abba, Father, cry, Father, Father, because God has an answer and he has allowed somebody to serve physically that's called the same name he is on this earth. That's the fathers that are here on this earth that are serving every day and meeting the needs of their family. Let me say to you that I have three different points that I'd like to share with you. The fathers depicted in this scripture where God is actually showing himself and sharing with fathers on earth are three things. Number one, that fathers are peacemakers. Number two, the fathers are coverings. The number three, fathers are redeemers. And I'd like to talk about that. In this particular scripture text, there's a son. He's underneath a lot of stress. He's left home. He asked his father for his inheritance, and he took the inheritance, and he went and squandered it all away. Now, let me tell you something. I think my father would have been mad at me if I would have asked for my inheritance, and he was still alive. Can you imagine asking for your father for your part of your inheritance while he's yet living? You know, if my son came to get my car and came to get my house and came to get all the food out my refrigerator and I'm still alive, I'd be just a little insulted by that. But this is what happened. But this father allowed it to occur. And the son went out and squandered all the money away. This precious, 
treasure that was being saved up so that he could have a future, an inheritance. After squirming it away, he started working at a pig farm and got to the place he didn't have any food to eat. And he's sitting there eating the same food that the pigs were eating in the pig mud. And then he realized, and this is what the Bible says, that he came to himself. First point I'd like to share with you is that fathers are peacemakers because God is telling us the answer and the, uh, the cry of somebody crying out for a father and the answers of what a father should be. The first thing is that, it's a, that he is a peacemaker. This son realized in the midst of this pig mud, eating pig food, the Bible says he came to himself. He realized that, my, let me stop for a minute, there's been nothing like being at home. There's nothing like that. He became grateful when he realized how bad things could be. Now I'd like to tell you something. Don't wait till it's all messed up before you become grateful. Why don't you be grateful right now? Telling your dads and dad-like images in your life how grateful you are that they've been there for you. Let me tell you that you would not be who you are today if they would not have poured into you both the God on earth and the God in heaven. We have to be grateful for what they've done, but this son was not grateful and had to experience the depths of loss before he could appreciate the height of celebration he had in his life. When he came to himself, he realized that his dad, the three P's of being a peacemaker, he realized his dad was a protector. His dad was the one who was protecting him to make sure he never ended up in a pig farm working and make sure that he never ended up trying to eat leftover corn that was left on the field. And so his dad had protected him. When you've been protected by your father, you don't even know how bad it could be. So just give him, just give him appreciation because you don't know what it really could be like. Fathers are protectors, and I celebrate every protecting father here today. Every father that would never let anything happen to his children, that would step in and protect and would rise to the occasion. I celebrate you because you are a protector, and we're glad to know that you have been there through this time. Number two, after he came to himself, a peacemaker provides protection. Because if you don't have any protection, you have no peace. A peacemaker also is a provider. The son said, the servants, follow this for a minute, don't miss it. The servants had enough bread. Not simply that there was enough bread in their house, but their servants had enough bread to eat. He was fed well and treated well in his home. His father was a provider. But to be a peacemaker, you can't be worried about surviving. But fathers are those that step in and provide. There was enough bread, which means he never had to worry about surviving, which means that he had the joys of having peace in his life because he had a good father that he could say thank you to. God is giving us the prototype of what a good father looks like while Jesus is telling this parable. Let's not miss it. Let's find the secrets that are here. And then finally, he said, I will arise and go home. And when I arrive at my father's house, I will ask for forgiveness. I have sinned against heaven, and I have also sinned against my father's house. And so the, the final P of being a peacemaker is being a priest. Fathers are priests. Priests are those that go to God on behalf of their family, on behalf of their congregants, on behalf of the world, and intercede for them in the heavenlies. Somebody that prays for you. You see, you don't have any peace when you have failure, when you've backslidden, when your life is messed up. There's no peace there. But when you have a father who's a priest and you can go to the father and he intercedes in the heavenlies for you, you can have peace. He's a peacemaker because he's your priest that can bring you to the heavenly place. I tell you that no matter how bad things have gotten, no matter how much sin may have been in your life, no matter how terrible things are, your God is a man who can wash away all sins, and your father is a peacemaker who is a priest. Allow him to pray for you. Let me pause here just for a moment and tell you that I think there's nothing more powerful than when a father takes you in his arms and intercedes and starts praying for his children. When he holds on to his daughter and he prays and intercedes in the heavenlies and asks God to 
be there and to be present with her and to forgive her and to wash her. There's nothing more powerful than that priest interceding for you. I thank you for every father, every priest that I'm talking to right now, how you've been the priest of your home. That's how that this young man began to cry out, Father, Father. It's not strange to me that he doesn't call his mother. He talks about going home to see his father because he's in distress and he needs a peacemaker. The second thing that I believe he needed was a covering. Fathers are coverings. And we find here that the son says, I am no longer worthy to be a son anymore. I'd like to tell you that I have felt at times that I was no longer worthy to be God's son. I felt at times that I failed God and I told God what I was going to do. I felt at times I laid down the altar and I cried out to God and I still rebelled against him later and didn't follow him. I just want to let you know that I didn't feel worthy. But let me tell you some of the powerful words that I heard from my father God. He still came back and told me that I was a son of his. I still heard his voice tell me that I'm his beloved. I still heard his voice tell me that he was going to be with me until the end. I still heard him say that I was of a holy tribe and a holy group of people. And that was this C word under covering important. That was confidence building. You see, when you're going to be a covering for somebody, you have to be a confidence builder. You have to build up their confidence even when they're in the place of a loss of status. You recoup it for them. You're a confidence builder. Fathers are confidence builders. My dad had a way of telling me and making me think that I could accomplish anything. He was a confidence builder. And after I had a failure, and after I didn't do it the right way, he had a way of after talking to me about my failure, he had a way of telling me, hey, look, son, you can still make it, and we can do this again. I never felt like I was a continuous failure. I just felt like I had a failure. And so fathers are confidence builders. Number two, he says he wants to go home to his father's house. Because a true covering is to be able to go into your father's house. He wanted to arrive at his city of refuge. See, the Bible says that the cities of refuges were places that people could go and they could remain there until the uh, trial for what they had supposedly committed had passed over. It was a place of protection until finally they could find out what went on. Sometimes some very confusing and difficult things can happen in your life. Perhaps the loss of your job, perhaps the loss of your family, perhaps the loss of your wife, perhaps the loss of some situation in your life, but you need a place of refuge, a city of refuge that you can just be protected so you can get yourself together for a minute. He said, I just need to get home to my daddy's house, a city of refuge. You see, when you got a covering, it's the city of refuge is a roof and side walls that protect you. Your dad becomes a place that protects you from the fiery darts of the enemy. You see, no police officer wants to go into danger without a bulletproof vest on because he understands it's his covering. It's his protection. You need that covering of a father and fathers need to cover their children. The Bible says that this issue of the fathers being a covering and our kids crying out, crying, Father, Father, well, here it is that the son is coming home. He wants to be covered. And the Bible says from a long, far away position, the father saw him. Let me tell you what I think this means. I may be wrong, but I think I'm right. This father must have every day gone to his gate and stared way out into the sunset and the sunrise at the horizon and waited for his son to come home. How is it that he sees his son at the very moment his son is coming home and sees him from a far position unless he's been going there on a constant basis looking for the return of his son? I think that God watches for our return when we get too far away from him. I think he looks out into the horizon and waits for us to come back. I can tell you right now, if you need to return, God Father is waiting on you. But I also want to tell you this, that 
as being godly representatives of God on earth, we as fathers must be in an anticipated mode to look out for the children of God so that we can see them coming home from a far distance and we can be prepared to be there with open arms just as our father would be when they return. I'm a father. And my heart goes out to the children of God. And I don't want any child out there. I don't want any person out there feeling that they're too far away. Just start heading home. Because God is standing there. And I represent him on earth with arms open wide, waiting on your return. The third C of a covering is to be a caregiver. When the father sees him, he runs to him. He embraces him. And he kisses him. What might that mean? First of all, that this is the only place in Scripture where the Father is being depicted. God, the Father, is being depicted as running to anything. God never ran to anything. Things came to him. But when his children came home, when his children were in distress, when his children were in that bad situation and they were crying, Father, Father, it made God run to them. He depicts himself as a runner. The son didn't need to get to him. He got to the son. And the Bible says, then he embraced him. He grabbed him. He covered him. He put his arms around him and he kissed him. Now let me tell you that my Sid, my kids would um, my kids would run to my father when they did something wrong when they were at grandfather's house. And when they ran to him, my father would put his arms up and put his arms around my kids. And this is what he'd say. He said, You made it to grandfather's zone. And my father would tell me when they made it there, he says, Son, you can't touch them now. I said, Dad, do you know what they just did? You wouldn't let them get away with that. He said, I'm sorry, son. You can't touch them right now Amen. because they made it to father's zone. They made it to grandfather's zone, and they are now protected because I am what he was saying. They're covering. I'm telling you, when this father ran and grabbed his son, he covered him. He embraced him, and he kissed him. We as men must be intimately involved with our children. We must show care and we must show love because the Father shows himself loving and caring for us. Where do we get this notion that men don't show compassion and our children are waiting to feel it, to sense it, and to receive it? A father is a covering and he covers as a caregiver. Covering means you are a confidence builder, a city of refuge, and you are a caregiver. Cover your children. And then the next point, last point, is that fathers are redeemers. Fathers are redeemers because they are those that will reveal your future. Follow me for a moment. They redeem the past because they give you a new future. Let me explain it to you for a moment. You see, when the son came home, the son began with a long story to the father. And the son says, I'm not worthy. If you just treat me like one of the servants, if I can just come back home, Dad. I did wrong, me, paraphrasing, not in the text. But can you see a son coming home after doing wrong? I've done wrong, Father. I confess my sins. I was with wayward women, and I was gambling, and I was spending money on stupid things. I was drinking. I was doing all the ungodly things that you raised me not to do. But the son comes home confessing, but because he has a repentant heart, because he's confessing his past, the dad knows he doesn't have to link into his past because the son's confessing his past. He's repenting. I want to tell you what the father does. The father doesn't seem to link into anything that the son is saying. Instead, he becomes a revealer of the son's future. Fathers are prophetic. They prophetically prophesy their children's future so they cannot get stuck in the baggage of their past. 
You do not have to live day after day in what happened yesterday because God has cast a future for you. He's spoken it to the Father in your life and the Father in life will speak it to you. I speak the blessings of God upon your life. Amen. Because God is good. Fathers are revealers. This day, Father, this day, this day, call your kids and reveal to them. Prophesy to them. Tell them about their future, regardless to what their past was. You are a redeemer. You buy back. You get back what they lost, what the devil has stolen, what the canker worm has taken. You restore it again with the voice and the power of the Almighty. Speak to them as God will give you a word for them. Secondly, by being a redeemer, fathers are restorers. I love this because placed in the text in the, in the, ES, the ESV version says it this way. The father turns to his servants and he says, quickly. Uh, the, the King James might have used language like straightway. <laughs> that, that this needs to happen immediately. And the Bible says he doesn't turn to a servant. It says he turns to servants. He tells the servants quickly get the best robe, not any robe. And the best robe was probably his robe. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He told his servants go get my robe because I want to put it on my son. Yeah. You see when you put a robe on somebody that was yours, you pass your mantle to them. You pass your blessings to them. You pass who you were to them. And so thereby, he is now placing his robe, placing, placing his blessings upon him. He says, get the best robe, which was probably his robe. He says, go and get the ring. And he says, also, get him some shoes. But let me tell you what the ring meant. The ring was a family ring that had an insignia in the middle of it. It allowed you when you went shopping, went different places, you could give the insignia of your family. And when you did that, people would then allow you to pay on credit because your family was good for it and had it covered. He gave him the symbol that allowed him to be resourced from his father's home. Now remember, just a little while ago, he was sitting with pigs with nothing to eat. And now his father put on his hand a ring that gave him access to resources. Yeah. I want to tell you something about what God has done for us. Yes, this is a prophetic moment. God has allowed for us to receive because we are a child of God, his ring, so that we might go into the heavens. The Bible says we come violently by force, getting those things that we need. Why? Because we have an insignia from the Father. Yeah. And, we, and we ask God to resource us, supply my needs as they are the riches which are in glory. And now, when the enemy comes against us, we cannot be overtaken by the devil. Let me tell you why. Because God will resource us with everything we need so we can overcome him. The father said, you are a resource now, son. Because he said, you've been redeemed. What a prophetic word. You've been redeemed. Don't worry about yesterday. You've been restored. They put shoes on his feet which means that this man had been walking around for some time without shoes on his feet. Probably had swords on his feet and ulcers on his feet and, and, and uh, blisters on his feet because he'd been walking without any shoes on. Remember, he's walking in the mud and the pig dud. Probably his feet were infected. His father looked at his feet and said, put some shoes on my boy's feet. Make sure his feet are okay. Make sure he can stand solid again. Make sure he can stand up like a man and he doesn't have to lay down in the mud anymore. I'm putting some new shoes on him. Fathers are the kind of people that are redeemers. They reveal, they prophetically prophesy, they restore, and they also rejoice. This is what the father said. He said, go and get the fatted calf. Follow me for a moment. Not any one of the calves. Go get the calf that we intentionally, the calf that we intentionally overfed so that we can have one large enough that we could have a party. <laughs> he said, go get the fatted calf, the calf that was intentionally overfed. And he said, bring that calf here that we might slaughter it so that we might eat it because we're about to have a party. Why? Because my son is home. Why? Because my son was lost 
and now he is found. Because my son was dead, and now he is alive again. Yes. You see, when you've been redeemed by the power of God, you see, when you've been redeemed from your yesterday's failures, there's a moment for rejoicing. And there's nobody like a rejoicing father. There's nobody like a father that can celebrate with you. There's a man, I can't remember his name right now, he was running a marathon, and just as he got at the end of the marathon, he got a Charlie horse or a cramp in his leg and was unable to finish, and he fell down on the course. His father was sitting up in the stands and saw him fall down. His father stood up from the stands and ran out there and grabbed his son, who now was going to finish at the end of the race, finishing almost last. His son was in the front about to win, and his dad would have surely celebrated him if he had been number one. But let me tell you about how dads are. This dad runs down and picks his son up off the course in the middle of this running course, puts his son's arm over his head, and lifts his son up and runs the last steps with him until he finishes, and then he celebrates with his son because he has still finished the race. Dads celebrate not just because our kids are first. We celebrate because they have finished what God has called them to do. If you want to be a dad, if you are a dad, and you're a very good dad like you are, then there's people crying out right now. They're crying, Father, Father. Our response is that we are peacemakers. And there are three Ps to being a peacemaker. You are a protector, a provider, and you're a priest. You're a covering. And there's three Cs to being a covering. You're a confidence builder, a city, for, fortress, uh, for, for, fortress, and you're also a caregiver. There are three hours of being a redeemer. You are a revealer, a restorer, and a rejoicer. You are the peacemaker. You are the covering. You are the redeemer. Let me intercede and pray for the fathers first because to every father that's there, I'm gonna ask you, no matter where you are, dad, stand with me right now. Just the fathers, I want to stand, why? because I need to pray for the fathers because God gave us a symbol right here. He gave us a picture of what a good father looks like. And he probably was talking about himself. Well, I want to be like God. I want to be a father like God was a father. And I know you do too. And I know you've been an incredible dad. And I know there's testimonies of all these kids around that testify to how great you are. And I'd like to right now spend this moment praying for the dads that are here. Yeah. We're going to have music as we get ready to end out. And so it is in this moment that I pray for the dads. Dad, lift your hands right where you are. That father, I see you. I see you, Dad. I see you in the spirit. Lift your hands right from where you are. You need an anointing upon your life to fulfill the next phase with your kids in their life. Dear Father, I pray for the uplifted hands that are throughout the audience and throughout the listening place, throughout the watching place, through the zone of God. And I pray for them right now, God, that these fathers will rise to the occasion and receive the anointing of God and fulfill their call to be peacemakers, to be coverings, to be redeemers. I pray for them to answer the call of God that is upon their life. And I give you, I give you, God, all the glory and all the praise for who they are. Now I'd like to pray for every person that is there that is not a father. But before I pray for you, I want to tell you something. Yeah. My father is not with me anymore. My father passed away. And I testify to you that I had the greatest father on the face of the earth. There was no father better than mine. He was the kind of person who was there no matter what I needed him for. But in the midst of realizing how important my dad was, he's not with me anymore. Well, with my dad not there, or for some of you, you never had a father there. And for some people, it never was a good father that you did have there. This is what I want to say to you. The words, Abba, Father, mean Daddy. And they were words that God said in Romans chapter 8. They were words that somebody cried out 
for God to adopt them. God, adopt me. Daddy, adopt me. You need a father. You need to find a father. Don't keep going without a dad because you need a, you need a peacemaker. You need a covering. You need a redeemer. Find a father. Get adopted. Have a covering. And let somebody be there for you. Don't keep going without a father in your life. Adopt somebody now because you need him. I want to pray for you this very moment. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for that girl. I pray for that young lady. I pray for that boy. I pray for that man. I pray for the people right now who are listening, hearing in, and knowing that they need to be a peacemaker in their life, a covering in their life, a redeemer in their life. And God, I pray, God, that they will be watched over and kept. And I know you, God, in glory, are keeping them right now. But you've also given a corresponding part of you on earth an earthly father. And God, I pray that they invest into one. And God, that they appreciate one. And they stand under the covering of one, even this very moment. Now God, every hurt, every pain, every emotional loss, every attack from the enemy, every spiritual God attack that has happened to them, I pray right now that they're covered. Is the father of this place. I cover them right now. In the presence of the Almighty. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Remember. Remember. There are things that are important. And things that we need to know. Remember this. Remember that. You can cry. Father. You don't have to. Be in a situation where you can cry out to the Father. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to get ready for our offering. And as you take this moment to prepare an offering, there are three ways that you can give. There are three ways you can give. Pick one of the three ways that you can give. They'll be on the screen for you. And as you get an opportunity to look at that, that would be a time for your offering, to give your offering to the Lord. And as you're preparing your offering, we're going to play music. Why? Because we know that when music is playing, people get released from spirits. It's things that oppress them, release them. I want you released because I want you to give. I want you to be a blessing. I don't know how much you've been a blessing during this corona time and you've been home, but I want you to be a blessing. I want you to look into what God has asked you to give today and give like the Lord has asked you to give. There are three ways to give. We're going to play, and while we're playing, I want you to make a special offering Make sure you're paying your tithes. Make sure you're giving your offering at this moment. I'll come back to close out. Thank you, Pastor.
This is a special time. It's a special moment. And today's a special day. Make sure you celebrate those who have stood in the gap to be your father today. Make sure that you let them know how important they are on this special day. Now to uh, uh, Pastor Harmon, who's been an incredible father, and to his wife, who has stood there in support of him. I continue to ask for God to give anointing and to give presence they may be able to fulfill everything that God has placed upon them in their life. My wife and I come together just to close out and tell you how much we love you and we care about you and how much we're looking for for God's blessings in your life. We're praying over your healing, we're praying over your prosperity, and we're praying over your future so God will bring every prophetic word to pass in your life. We love you, Good Night Celebration. We love you, everybody out who's watching today. Remember to God the glory. 